televised program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Attention, please, calling all cars. Attention, all cars. Broadcast 110. Keep your eyes open for a gang of safe crackers dressed as carpenters. That's all. Over oh, the Grande sets up on the many cities and counties where Rio Grande cracked gasoline is now being used for emergency cars. Here are reports from just a few of them. Berkeley, California. You bet we're satisfied. Berkeley police and emergency cars operated more efficiently last year than ever before. And we were used with the Rio Grande cracked gasoline in 1936, just as we did last year. During the San Diego Exposition, the emergency cars of San Diego County were called upon for unusual service. They tried Rio Grande cracked gasoline, and they say, We enjoyed great success with Rio Grande cracked gasoline, which has efficiently powered every emergency car operated by the county of San Diego. And confirmation comes from Oakland, California. We are more than satisfied with the results from using Rio Grande Cut gasoline in all Oakland emergency cars last year. This year, too, Oakland will continue to power all police cars, ambulances, fire and emergency engines with cracked gasoline. Los Angeles, we use its contract. We've used Rio Grande Cut gasoline in all Los Angeles police cars, ambulances, fire engines, and emergency equipment for three years. We see no reason to change. Los Angeles emergency cars are making better speed, have more power, and cost less per mile to run. And Rio Grande Crack Gasoline is entitled to much of the credit. We just renewed the contract with the Rio Grande Oil Company for all the gasoline used by the city of Los Angeles for the fourth consecutive year. And so come the report from city after city, county after county. For 1936, as in years past, it will still be true that more police cars, fire engines, ambulances, motorcycles, and other emergency equipment are powered with real brandy cut gasoline than any other brand. <laughs> and now we are pleased once more to present Chief James D. Davis of the Los Angeles Police Department. Chief Davis. Good evening, friends. In every criminal case, this department receives hundreds of tips, phone calls, and frank letters, most of which, when run down, prove to be of no help to the investigating officers. Occasionally, however, an alert citizen will prove himself to be of tremendous value by reporting a suspicious action. In the case you are about to hear, the promise of adventure led two eager boys into a maze of facts which, when investigated by members of the police department, uncovered an ingenious scheme and led to the arrest of the criminals. If all citizens were as careful to state plain facts when reporting a suspicious person or action, and less apt to exaggerate, it would be a great help in the work of stamping out crime. of Los Angeles stands an old house surrounded by a weed-grown garden, green by shabby eucalyptus palms. It is a mystery house, a silent house. To the children of the neighborhood, it is a haunted house. One night a year ago, the wind blew around its bleak corners out of a dark cloud which glowed duller from the reflected lights of the city. The wind moaned and whined. It ruffled the dry branches of the palms. It plucked up the stealing bark of the eucalyptus and whirled it away. It nipped at the noses of two small boys taking the short cut home past the old dark house. I kind of wish you hadn't taken the shortcut, Dick. Why? Well, of course I ain't afraid. But then I might stuff up my new shoes on the shadow wall. Oh, that's a shoes of form, Dick. Did you hear that? Mm. What was it? Mm. What was it? I don't know. Nothing to be scared about. I didn't 
Oh, gee, I'd like to No, I don't need to. Probably the wind just blew a single off the roof of the old house or something. Yes, probably. Oh, let's walk a little faster. Okay. Lady, I promised Mother I'd get home early. Look, look. What? Yeah. It's that window on the second floor of the old house. It went with the candle. Look, don't run so fast. Wait for me.
morning at a main intersection in Inglewood. The patrolman on the beach was walking along the street with a late to bed friend. Well, I'm glad you came by, George. I'm tired talking to myself. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Roland's walking up and down the street all night. Yeah, it sure does. Hey, you ought to be with me tonight, Hank. I hear that face that I got down into history. Let me tell you about it. Wait a minute, George. Huh? What's the matter? Look, there's a light in the back of the bank. Let's see what's doing back there. I just got a door. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, that's funny. Hey, look, George. There's some cabinets sitting up a petition in the back. Mm-hmm. See? Well, I'm waving to you. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I guess you want to have the work done before banking hours. Oh, sure. That works for you. They don't want a lot of hammering and storm while the customers are around, I guess, huh? Yeah, no damn belong. You know, George, this is the worst suit I ever had. Nothing never happens out here. Oh, it's my doctor, Mr. Mayor. 
He's turning and fighting all the people. Do you know what they're saying? No, no. No. But look, Luke, he's open it. Strange. I saw a picture once where I thought I'd be But that stuff meant it's gold. Mm. That's a piece of land, huh? It's so real. I was giving us the money. I was giving him a party. Mm. He got it off his bed about this right away. Come on, let's get out of here. Oh, 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 you see, why we were playing ball and I missed the tip. Playing ball and I missed the tip. I think it's better. The ball came up and I... was just looking for it. I was looking for your ball, huh? I'll beat the young champ to first pass. I'll beat you with an into your work with you. Oh, 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 so we pounced up the end of the house across the street off this point. I don't know, I'll bet he's hurt. Mm, you saw them passing money for gold, huh? Yeah, it always was suspicious. I should have been wondering. Why would the man get him to beat him up? Why would he keep us up? You better read them off with the sword. Yes, maybe we better. But first off, I think we better get Puppy to the hospital. You think it? Will it be all right? Well, I can't tell him to see. But I'll get him some soon. It's like he's more stiff than anything else. So we better get over the vet and make sure. Uh... Yeah. Hey, 
evening around the bank. I don't know what the idea is. Hey, please, hold up. He's throwing my car. Come on, come on. Get this guy in our car and follow him. Come on, buddy. You're coming with us. Hey, what is this? Who are you? Come on, come on. Don't waste any time. Hey, help, I'm being kidnapped. Uh -huh. Get in there. Okay, woman, well, we'll let's go. Hey, listen. I ain't done nothing. Don't put me on the spot. You're listen. not being put on the spot. We're police officers. Police officers? Oh, why don't you say so? I lost you with that guy. What did you do to you? Well, I got a call for a pickup at that number, and he stepped out and got me around the other side of the cab. Then he wanted to look up a number, and he struck me and took my cap and drove away in my chair. There he is. Up the block there. Step on it, woman. You better get down on the floor, buddy. There may be some shooting. Okay. Get alongside him and try to hit him off. All right. All right. Pull over there, buddy. Oh, yeah. <coughs> oh, so he wants to shoot it out, eh? Look out. He's going to shoot again. I'll take care of that. <coughs> Good boy, Chitwood. You blew the gun right out of his hand. Yeah, but he's still able to drive all right. Give him a lead and we'll give him tires up. Okay. That's it. He's out of control. There he is. Over by that wall. He's stone clear. He's dead. He ought to be. After all that. Yeah. He isn't, though. He's still breathing. All right, boys. Pick him up. What? Huh? Oh, drop that chap. <laughs> Boy, this is one for the book. What's so funny? I right, just got that chap. Okay, officer. I don't want to get bumped off as if you're a brother officer. What are you talking about? Well, if you permit me to lower my hands, I'll produce my bag. I'm Captain Kitwood. This is my partner, Lieutenant Woolman, of the robbery squad of the Los Angeles Police Department. That's a good one on me. Yeah. Give us what I know. You two fellas in thirty old clothes standing over a wrecked car with smoking revolvers. You look like a beast to me. Well, let me assure you, it might have been a worse beast. If you hadn't been in uniform, we'd certainly have let you have it, too. Yeah, but I had to draw on you. So did this guy. Yeah. Well, uh, got us all the ambulance, woman. Right. Oh, and tell that cab driver to come along with us. We're wanting to make out a complaining as we said. What's it all about, Captain Fitzwood? Well, this fellow here stole the cab from the driver in front of that old house up the street. What are you doing up there? We got a tip that they were peddling dope, so we staked out on it. Mm. So my two assistants were right after all. What do you mean? Oh, a couple of kids in the neighborhood, playing detectives. Told me some funny stories about the house up there. Oh, I detailed them to stick it out. And today, they said they seen a guy buying dope in there. And a big guy comes out and kicks their dog. Well, I didn't believe the story about the dope. But I figured if there was a guy around there mean enough to kick a dog, the place would be checked. So I made a report on it. Ah, you figured right. That's time for it. Uh, as soon as we get this guy into an ambulance, we'll go back up there with some of the men from headquarters and knock that plant over. An hour later, Chip Wood, Forbes, and Woolman, with a squad of men from headquarters, surround the old dark house on the hill. With his men posted, Chip Wood and Woolman quietly approach the front door. Break it in, boy. Yeah. Where are you packing here, woman? Nothing there but old papers and boxes. How about this room to the right? That's the side of the house where we saw the old woman. Okay, that's bad. Nobody here. Looks like you were just camping out here. A couple of cots, candles, frying pan, the fire. Hey! Look here. What? Huh? I'm about to do this for Bundles of cocaine. Huh. Yeah, this was a plant, all right. Now, what do you suppose this is? More dope? Well, in a can? Yeah, look. Dirty, sticky stuff. Mm-hmm. No, that isn't dope. That's putty. Putty? Now, what do you suppose? Hey, there's been several face-packing jobs recently that use putty instead of soap. I wonder... back the old house from cellar to garret. And the results of their findings send Lieutenant Captain Baker to the bedside of the wounded for steps in the jail ward of the hospital. Well, Smith, 
How do you feel today? Hurts like the devil. Hey, Bulls, there are a lot of brave guys shooting me down like they did. All right, Smith. No sense in being belligerent. You fired first. Belligerent, huh? Hey, listen, mister. When I get out of here, I'm going to get every one of you guys. And get you in my own way. You're not going to get out of here for a long time, Smith. Huh? What do you mean? Well, both your arms are broken. You're lucky there isn't a bullet in your heart. One was heading there, but the cab stopped it. And so get well. I'll live for a long time. Maybe so. But you'll be looking at the world through steel bars. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now, are you ready to talk? What about? Well, first, who was living with you in that house in Boyle Heights? Oh. And they got away, huh? Yes, they got away. But they the shooting and beat us. Well, that's just fine. Who are they? Wouldn't you like to know? Exactly, yes. And I ain't saying, see? They're out in the clear, and all you got on me is swiping that cab. I'll do a stretch in the county jail, and that'll do that. Oh, no, I don't. Why not? Hey, your friends were in a hurry to leave. They forgot their narcotics. I don't know anything about that. Well, maybe not. But we'll have a violation of the State Poison Act against you. The stuff wasn't mine. Whose was it, then? I'll take the rap. I ain't talking to you. Oh, so you'll take the rap. How about those bank robberies? What bank robberies? The ones where you use putty instead of soap to blow the face. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. I never had no putty. Is there any burglar's tools that are caught in this toolbox? No. Uh, you were dressed in carpenter's overalls when you swiped the cab. What bank were you planning to hold up that night? I ain't talking. You can't prove it. I think we can. Because you see, your friends also forget some of their dough when they left in such a hurry. They forgot about $2,000. We found that the serial numbers of that $2,000 are the same as the money that was stolen from that bank over on Slauson the other night. Now, how about it? Well, you better talk. We got you for swiping the cab, we got you for narcotic possession, and we got you for bank robbery. And, oh, yes, we got you for kicking a dog. For kicking a dog? Oh. So those little brats squeal, did they? A fine police force you got when you send kids out to do your work. How about it? Who's in on those jobs with you? Thanks, tough. Well, we'll get them sooner or later, you know. Mugs like you can't stay out of trouble very long. Okay. Go get them. But I won't tell you who they are. Go on, go on, send me up. I'll take my rap. But I won't turn too late. Criminal psychology is a funny thing, Smith. You kick a little dog, but you won't help us get whacked. Please calling all cards, sending all cards, cancellation broadcast 110. 
The government gang of state property. The leader of this gang is now in custody. That's all. Right. Old people. <laughs> Good night for the Rio Grande Oil Company. <laughs>